What's up everyone, I'm back with hopefully my last Twixer tutorial, and as promised, my method of making Twixer mats. This video has been long overdue. I wanted to make this as soon as I could, however, I lacked the motivation for it until obviously now. Anyway, let's go ahead and start this. So, when we're talking about Twixer, you always want to cherry pick your scenes as much as possible. The reason being for this is because of how some scenes have really large jumps in the next frame. If you want to see me talk more in depth on why this is so important and what to look for in scenes, go check out my first video regarding Twixter. The link will be in the description as well as where I learned Lalajero's post. Once you've found your scene, you need to pre-compose it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is pre-compose the layer and we're just going to call this uh, main comp here. Um, we're going to go inside of it and then we have this clip here. Um, so what you want to do is determine the frame rate so uh in my case let's find out so it's going to be three yes yeah, so every three frames new character animation is drawn so what you want to do is apply twixter pro and in this case 23.976 divided by three and then we're going to put the blending mode on or warping rather on forward main background layer settings on this and pretty much this is like uh the main layer so what you want to do now is duplicate this layer delete twixter off of it pre-compose it uh we're gonna call this uh fg1 leg and as you can see we have this composition no twixter on it and what you want to do is take the pen tool and mask slightly outside of the leg so we're going to go ahead and do that now and try not to use too many uh, tracking points. You really don't need that many. For the most part, anyway, uh, reason being is because the more tracking points, the harder it is to manage. If that makes any sense. So Basically, we're just telling Twixter that this is the object in front. And what we're going to do is change this mask to none for now. Keyframe mask path. Go forward until it moves again. So it's going to be here. And then basically, we want to just readjust these to where they will be similar to how they was before. And once again, this is basically just telling, explaining Twixter. Well, motion mats in general is just basically explaining to Twixter what is in the background and foreground of each object. So if you have overlapping objects, basically this will help a lot. Uh, I chose this scene on purpose simply because I knew that this uh, the legs overlap each other. So I'm just going to take it. Also, uh, once you mask it, you cannot add any more points after that. It will mess it up. So I'm just going to take it and uh, looks like right there, I think. Okay. So that's two frames down. Got another frame that's moved. So we got to fix it. And basically you just want to do this until uh, there's no more frames uh, that haven't been animated for this whichever part of the body or whatever you want to do uh also keep in mind that um when you're doing this you want to break it up into separate pieces don't do the mask like all at once like for example don't mask out an entire person and expect it to twixt them entirely because it's really what part of the body like a lot of times it can be hair overlapping or just shitty animation in general so um, you want to break it up in separate pieces. If you want to see like more in depth, uh, go check out RGB's channel. Uh, link will be in the description. He's actually the person who helped me learn quite a bit about Twixter. Um, when I couldn't really understand a lot of it. And, uh, yeah, you should check him out and you'll actually see better examples of how in depth you can actually be with Twixter. So... Uh, what I think I'm going to go ahead and do actually is I'm just going to finish masking this out and uh, we'll cut to there because I'm sure you guys don't want to see me do this. So, yeah. All right. So I am now done with the first mask for the uh, foreground one mat. 
which would be whatever is in front of the object behind. So there's two legs. This one's foreground one. This is foreground two. Um, and now you can change the masking mode to add. And basically this is your first motion mat. Now what you also want to do is highlight these keyframes, control C, and then you need to apply it to the actual Twixter layer itself and then change it back to none for this one. You want to put foreground one mat as the foreground one leg, which is this composition where it's just the mask. Um, change the mat channel to alpha and motion sensitivity to 100. And that is basically the first mask done out of uh, maybe three, depending. I don't really know if I need to do the hand yet. So now we're going to basically do the same thing, but with the other leg, the back leg, foreground two. So we're going to get rid of Twixter, pre-compose it once again. We're going to call this FG2 leg. And we're going to go into the composition. And now basically we're going to, no, oh, yeah, we need to delete the mask as well. Um, we're going to go into this composition and mask the other leg, which like I said, it all varies. Uh, also, side note, you need to make sure that the, when you're doing motion mats, you need to make sure it's slightly outside of the, whatever you're basically trying to make a motion mat. So like I said, in this case, the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I messed up. Okay. And like I said, try and minimize as many points as possible. You don't really need that many. Um, the more you do it, the less you'll end up using. You'll get the hang of it. So... Right now we have one leg, or one frame done rather for the leg. And we need to click mask path and change this to none and basically do the same thing that we just did. So I will be back whenever we get this done. So now that we're done with the mask, what we can do is make sure we set this to add. And keep in mind, we need to also grab the keyframes from here for the mask. Go back into the Twixter composition and apply the mask to here make sure it's set to none and we're gonna put this in foreground two so foreground two leg alpha motion system to 100 foreground one mask so we're gonna do mask one mask two uh mask one mask two yeah okay and that pretty much sums up Twixter mats. So if we let this pre-render now, which this scene will warp nonetheless, it still has a lot of warping issues, but it will look a lot better than what it did in the past. So if you're looking for perfect Twixter, honestly, there's not really like any such thing for anime. So don't expect to have that type of output. Um, you can make them pretty close to it. It just really depends on the scene. So that's why I said earlier to make sure you cherry pick the scene. Uh, also make sure you pre-render in full to get the full effect. And as you can see. Still pretty noticeable warp there, but that's just because of the animation. I kind of chose this scene on purpose. To give you an example of what to, I guess, kind of not look for. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let this pre-render and I'll actually show you guys what it looks like. Alright, and it is now done pre-rendering. And if we play it, very, very big difference in terms of the warping. So uh, now what you can do if you want to slow or make it faster, which in this case, I guess we can make it slower, which keep in mind... The slower it is, the more out of artifacts you'll most likely see. So we're only going to go up like uh, 1.5 seconds to see. And I'm going to let this pre-render once again. 
And now that it's slowed down more, you will actually notice that there's more warping, but you can fix that with some CC Force Motion Blur or RSMB. Um, Twixter mats, by the way, are very, very taxing on a computer, so I would really only recommend it if you absolutely have to. And also, if you're going to apply any sort of motion blur, it is going to make it 100 times worse. Um, also, stay away from CC wide time. That will literally take years. Um, I took a clip, actually, it was like 5 seconds long, I believe, and it took uh, about 30 minutes to render it, so... But no, I think that's about it to wrap up this entire tutorial for motion mats. Hopefully this will be my last video on Twixter. Um, I might make more depending. Um, just put in the comments what you'd like to see in my next video and I will give it a thought. So if you guys enjoyed. <clears throat> I think that wraps up about everything that I need to do for Twixter. Um, I guess I can make another video explaining how to hide uh, artifacts or get rid of them. But for the most part, this is about as good as it gets. Hopefully I don't have to make another one, but who knows. Uh, if you want a specific tutorial or something explained to you, uh, feel free to join my Discord server, which link will be in the description. Um, I'm pretty much always on, so there's that. Uh, you could always recommend me tutorials to make. And that will be all for this video. Have a good day.